Hi, I'm Elaine. This is Elaine is XYZ, a vlog that's currently coming to you from quarantine. I'm nearing the end of week one of this legally enforced lockdown here in my family home in Shanghai, China, and it's been going pretty okay so far. I feel super lucky that I got in before China slammed the door shut. My guess is that they're running out of quarantine beds considering all new cases are like Chinese nationals coming from European countries. <sighs> My community's WeChat group is buzzing all the time with people reporting in their temperatures and also false alarms for people opening their doors without permission. So far they've all been false alarms. I've been able to order and get deliveries pretty easily. In fact, it's kind of funny, the delivery apps will actually text me to tell me that my delivery person has a clean bill of health. And possibly because so much of my livelihood was digital to begin with, um, there hasn't been really that much change to my social life. Hmm. Well, I mean, I guess I'm talking to bartenders a lot less. Hello, do you come around here often? Since this vlog is going to be so talky, I wanted to switch up the scenes a little bit and also get some fresh air. <sighs> so what's this vlog about? Because even if your quarantine isn't mandatory and enforced by a door monitor, um, you probably already know what lockdown is kind of like by this point. And what I want to talk about is this. There's a lot of good advice going around about how we need to be kind to each other in these times and that is absolutely true. But I also understand how hard it is to remember to be kind when you're feeling stressed and anxious like a lot of us are right now. At least for me personally. All the last month with the visa issues and not quite knowing where to go and basically like everyone else having to start my 2020 plans over from scratch. I noticed it was really, really hard to communicate compassionately. Like really listen to what someone was trying to express even if the way they were expressing it I personally found very off-putting. And I was finding it really hard to come to an understanding with someone I disagreed with rather than beat them into submission with my words. Hello, person on the internet. Here's an essay about why you're wrong with subtle jabs at your intelligence and ability to process logic worked in just enough so that you can't accuse me of attacking you, but you know I think you're stupid. And I hate you for continuing to be stupid because obviously you're everything that's wrong in the world, but I will only passively aggressively let you know that so that once again you can't accuse me of making this personal. And I'm not saying to not argue for something you believe in. Lord knows if I didn't have a lot of strong opinions that I wanted to share, I wouldn't have a YouTube channel. But when you're diatribing, let's face it, you're not trying to bring someone over to your side. You've depersonalized them to use them as a punching bag to vent your own frustration. I've realized from this last month that good communication is kind of like playing a sport. And to get good at it, you have to practice a lot but it's really hard to practice when you're injured. And mentally, being afraid and stressed out all the time is like one big non-stop injury. Your amygdala is driving all the interactions, your body is in constant fight or flight mode, and of course it's gonna be hard to remember that the person that you're talking to is a person like you, with their own fears and stressors and treasure trove of unrealized dreams. So, as we continue this period of self-isolation, because goodness knows it's definitely not going to end at Easter, I figure before we even start talking about what the tenets of compassionate communication are, we need to get ourselves into the right mindset to accept these lessons and actually practice them without feeling like we're pulling teeth doing it. So when you feel like you're about to get into a stress-induced argument with someone, like the hairs on the back of your neck are prickling and you feel righteously angry at their completely wrong opinion, here are five things to do instead of become a pit of rage. One, turn off a 
and go do something with your hands. Maybe you're like me and you're online on social media a lot. Or perhaps you have yourself a quarantine pal, but they seem to be getting on your last nerve more and more recently. When you find your blood pressure rising, it's time to switch gears and distract your body from flight or fight mode by burning off that energy on something else. For some of you, this might be exercise. I've been trying to do that too. I've challenged myself to do 100 push-ups a day, so every time I'm like, oh, I've literally been dropping and giving 20. <laughs> also, being in my somewhat cluttered family home, I've been taking the time to rearrange stuff in storage. It also helps to put on some auditory distraction to keep your attention off bad things while you're doing this, like music. Beanie Babies. Or if you're like me, a person who internally monologues all the time and therefore needs something wordy and humorous, a recent favorite podcast of mine has been The Anthropocene Review by John Green, a novelist who's been going through any number of human-created things and giving them anywhere from one to five stars. But the globalism of pineapple pizza in particular goes even deeper, stretching across much of the world. Because Hawaiian pizza was invented in 1962 in Canada by a Greek immigrant who was inspired by Chinese cuisine to put a South American food on an Italian dish that went on to become most popular not in Hawaii, but in Australia, where, at least according to a survey printed in Pizza Marketing Quarterly, pineapple is the single most popular pizza topic. Two, watch your nutrition. Cooking is another thing you can do with your hands, but even if you're not a cook, making sure you're eating a well-balanced diet will do a lot for improving your mood. Lots of vegetables, less carbs, more healthy fats. You know, I think there's a reason why millennials are so into avocado toast, and it's because we need that omega-3 boost to deal with all the uncertainty created by our current capitalist dystopia. But besides eating better, you should also be drinking more water and supplementing for the fact that you're no longer getting out of the house and into the sun that much. Today I've actually gotten out into the sun, except for there's no sun, because it's been rainy and cold in Shanghai for the last four days. When will you ever end? You know, apparently something like 42% of American adults are vitamin D deficient regularly. Can you imagine how much that's going to go up now that we don't have access to the spring sun? Like if you thought seasonal affective disorder made you sad, <laughs> be prepared to get a lot sadder. <laughs> Luckily, while most vitamin supplements are scientifically proven to be bunk, uh, apparently vitamin D is the exception, so go look for those. Three, dress up, clean up. Times may seem to call for a return to sweats and PJs, but when our days are in danger of bleeding together, I really do believe that actually how you dress influences how you feel. Actually making sure we've cleaned ourselves, that we've put on clothes that demarcate your day into private me sleeping time and me doing anything else time can help kick each day out of a groove of just slowly turning into a giant potato. <laughs> Four, reframe your entire mindset. So, have you had this conversation with yourself? God, I'm being so stupid. Other people have it so much, so much worse than me. So why can't I pull myself together? I'm an idiot. <laughs> like, whoa. You don't have to feel guilty about not being okay right now. This whole time is crazy and unprecedented. We're both in the worst global crisis that's happened in the last hundred years. And because of social media and the internet now, we're so connected to each other that we're not only dealing with our own fears, we're taking in a lot of other people's fears as well. <sighs> I think for the first time in my lifetime at least, we're facing this event where by the end of it, every single person on earth will have known someone who suffered or died from it. But even before that, even without you know something as serious as death, we've all already lost something. 
we're all actually in grief over plans that we had for ourselves in 2020. And those could be big things like jobs and livelihoods, or they could be smaller things like graduation parties and a vacation you really wanted to take. No matter how tiny your problem is, it is a problem and you do need to attend to it. Like an analogy I like to use is that if you gash your thumb, you don't just like ignore it and let it fester because you know someone who got their leg amputated. Granted, hopefully you have enough self-awareness to not tell the person getting their leg amputated. I totally know what you're going through. Have you seen this boo-boo? But you can find a private moment for yourself to go get some Neosporin and a Band-Aid and make sure you don't get infected or bleed out. Is that too metaphor -y? What I'm trying to say is that just because your grief is over a smaller thing does not mean that you're not grieving. And you should allow yourself the time to heal and let yourself go through all the stages of anger and sadness and bargaining until you can accept that this is your life now. And then hopefully from there you can chill out about what you can't control and concentrate on what you can. Which takes us to number five, do something helpful. Find friends and family to host a fun chat about things that you like that are not corona related. You'll brighten up their day and also yours. Besides TV watching parties and quarantinis, I've also been doing gentle morning yoga over video chat with my mom who's in Taiwan right now and can't return back to China. If you know a healthcare professional or someone who's on the front lines of this thing, send them a word of appreciation and make sure they know that they don't have to respond because they're probably incredibly busy right now. But, but everyone I know who's keeping things running has said that they really appreciate knowing that they're appreciated. I can only speak to the US right now because that's where I'm from and that's where a good chunk of my friends are and that's now the country with the highest amount of coronavirus cases and I am smiling to keep from crying because this was something that considering our 20 years of infrastructure dismantlement and the current insanity of the people in charge it was kind of obvious that America would be the hardest hit and now that it is it's like being in the middle of a Greek tragedy so at least in the States, it would be helpful if part of that appreciation is actually adding your voice into the fray of getting companies to actually offer adequate worker protections. Instead of, say, demanding that employees go to work or get fired on the spot, or just even straight up laying off people via video chat, or any of the crazily inhumane ways corporations are choosing to handle this situation right now. So that, and also donate to various initiatives that are trying to get this under control. So I have two recommendations of where to donate to that I trust that I'm going to be putting in the description below, but um, I think if you ask in your community, you will probably find someone local that's doing something good to help as well. Mr. Rogers style, always look for the helpers. Do something helpful. And then after doing these things, you can return to that offending conversation that you are having and, well, see if there's a way to respond that isn't you just unleashing your own stress. Maybe they had a point and they just weren't making it well. Maybe you're still super right, but you found a nicer way to explain things so that you're not insulting or denigrating someone. Just hopefully you found the strength to be kind because we need a lot more of that right now. If you found this useful, please like and subscribe. You can find me off of YouTube on my website and Instagram. And see you next time doing whatever it is I'm doing.